I'll show you a sign I'm working on. It kind of looks funky just looking at it this way, but it's, uh, <clears throat> you look at it, these are curved, and they're curved for a reason. This is the board that I'm putting it on. So I'm trying to fit the curve to this, but I made a mistake. Um, one of the mistakes I made is that I didn't outline the ellipse that was here. So the next time I do a rough cut like this, I'll outline the ellipse so that I can cut it on my bandsaw to make sure that everything is gonna fit perfectly on this piece of wood. The problem with this piece of wood when you're cutting it is you have to stay, the letters themselves have to stay away from the edge on this end because as you can see, it's a tapered edge. So if you look right here, is at maximum depth, which is about an inch. So as I go from here to here, it goes to zero, from an inch to zero. So I could, since I'm cutting these letters at about 0.15, these are 0.2, so they're, I think they're a little deep. So I'm gonna back it up to 0 0.14, 0 0.15, <clears throat> because I'm gonna fill these with uh, wood putty, walnut wood putty. So, that will give me the contrast I want. And then I'll varnish the whole thing or lacquer the whole thing. So first part I'm going to do here is I'm going to lacquer this uh, so that when I cut this, cut the letters in it, it will have raw wood down in here, but lacquered wood up here so that when I smear the wood putty in there, it won't sink, sink as deeply into the grain. Of course, once I've done it, I'm gonna sand this back down. So it goes a little way. That's one of the reasons I made this one so deep, but it's just a little too deep. So that's what I'm gonna do. So this is gonna fit on here. So I'm gonna take it over to the bandsaw and basically cut close to the letters all the way around and then lay it on here and see how it fits. So that's my next step. And we're gonna change it a little bit. My wife doesn't think I can, you can read it far enough away from where our unit is in Florida. So we're gonna take and put our names on these. This will be a Cecil and an Audrey name panels. Okay, so it'll be Cecil here and Audrey there, or Audrey there and Cecil here, one of the two. So those will be separately. And that will allow me to enlarge, take our names off here and enlarge the address in the street. So when it's all done, there'll be three of them put fitting together. So it'll be that one with the other two either on top or below it. We'll see how it turns out. So my first project is to cut this and see if it fits. Anytime you have a, a really neat piece of wood, this is given to me by a friend. You want to do your practice cuts first on this to make sure it's going to fit. And as you can see, this board has a saw cut through it and it's got a few other things that are issues with it. Um, it's pretty on this side but it, that creates a problem when you're trying to make it into something. Um, so we'll see how it goes. Uh, let me cut this out and see if it fits on there and then we'll deal with it. Have fun with your CNC. I'll be back soon. All right what I did was a rough cut and you can see that uh, let me change so you can zoom out a little bit there. Um, it fits, and that's what I was looking for. Does this fit on the piece of wood? Now let me go down where you can see a little better. And it gives you a clear edge all the way around. Right here is where I was worried whether my letters were going to be too close to out here, and they're not. They're back far enough, and it's not going to hurt anything. And it's back far enough here. So that means I can actually clamp if I want to out here with a hard clamp and then I'll use two block clamps here. In other words, I'll take a block and screw it down and screw into this wood. So there'll be a little hole there and a little hole over here to hold it in place. And I'll show you a picture of that when I actually machine it because it's going to be machined with an eighth inch bit. And that's what I've done. It looks pretty good. Uh, I had to make some changes in the lettering here and here to get the bit through, but uh, it came out fine. 
So it does fit. And if you notice, I just lopped it off on the bandsaw. I just, it's not a really straight, pretty cut, but the reality is I'm just checking my fit. So now I know it fits. I know that it'll work. And then I could, now I could machine this. But unfortunately, I've changed my design. So uh, I'm just showing you basically, how do I go from a prototype to a finished product? To make sure if you've got a unique piece of wood that you can make it fit. So you do a rough cut first on a piece of scrap wood that'll fit on there. You get the edges so that they're within the elliptical shape that you've got. And you place it on the wood, see if it fits. And voila, that's my first few steps. Design it, test cut it, test fit it. And then if this must, was my finished version of the sign, I'd simply clamp this into my CNC and machine it, just like I did there, so that we get the finished cut. The difference, of course, is by looking at this, I've decided that that cut is a little bit too deep to fill with wood. So I'm gonna come back up to about 0.14 instead of 0.2 that way i save some wood putty and because i'm not going to sand this down very much i don't want to take too much off this because if you look at it it's thinning up so that will be my finished sign and when i get the final design done i'll show you that as well okay what i'm going to do is find some center points in other words, if I look at this and I measure between here and here, it's five and a half. Well, five and a half divided by two is two and three quarters. So I'm going to make a really fine line right there, one that I can erase. This has already been varnished a little bit. I'm going to come over here, it's eight inches, so halfway would be four inches right there. There's another fine point. Now, what I'm going to do is use my teach pendant to move my X and Y axes and it always comes up fast which is not always the best thing. I know I'm going to rest it against this stop over here so I'm going to find that point first. So I'm going to go over there that's down Y over X and this drifts down a little bit so I always put a block under it it right there. The bearings and everything are good enough in this that it just, with the weight of this mass and all the cables and all that stuff, it'll drift down. So I put a block under it. So you always raise the block up a little bit. Raise it up so you can take your block out if you block it. Oops. Let's go this way. So I'll line it up. So it's right on that. Now I'm going to go down to slow. So I can slow it down. Line up that point. I can get it right in the middle. But I'm not going to do that. I'm going to get it right on the edge of this. Alright? Right on the edge of the cutter. The reason I'm doing that is that lines it up a little more accurately. So I need to go to the left a little bit. My left, which is away because that's the front. Down. All right, now that's lined up on that point. I don't know whether you can see it or not. Let me look and see if you can see it. Yeah, you can't, but there's a line there that you can, trust me, there's a line there. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring this forward because I have another line that we made right here. And if it lines up the same, then we're good. If not, I'm gonna shift this left to right so that we get our axes this way, which is the center of the board, lined up, okay? How am I gonna find the center the other way? I'll just measure from there to there and mark the center point, and then I'll move it. So I'm gonna bring it left. Oops, bring it up just a hair, so I don't want to scrape. 
and I'll increase my speed. and slow. Now, other points right here. And it looks like that I have to shift this. Keep in mind, this is pegged against that side, so it's not going to move. So I'm going to shift this down so it's right even with the other. So now my x-axis alignment with the tool is aligned. So that'll be, it won't be crooked. You know, it won't be twisted in the sign. It'll be straight and level. And that's the first point. Well, how do I lock that in place? Well, I know that it's locked there, so I'm gonna put a screw on this one to lock it here. So I'll take my screwdriver, screw this board down. If you notice this board captures the outside edge of this, which is pretty nice. These screws are long enough to go in, but not go through the table. So, so it holds it down nice and tight. So now we're trapped that way. I'm gonna put another one on this side. Okay, so we're captured this way, left and right. And I want to hold it down. And I'm going to hold it down by using another one of these screws right through the side here. All right? So I'm going to capture it this way. Okay. So now this is secure. It's not going to move. But it's not secure on that end. What I'm going to do over there, and I'll move the camera so you can see it a little better. I'm going to do the same thing over there, but the way the wood drifts away on that end, I'm going to put a board across the top so that it's secure. So let me rotate this a little bit so you can see it. Zoom in. Oops. The other end. Raise it up a little bit. And that way you'll see what I'm doing. So I'm gonna repeat one more time. I'm going to capture this side. I'm gonna do it like that. I'm gonna put an inch and a quarter screw in there. And then I'm gonna use this board to trap the top of this. Now, I'm going to put the board far enough this way because I've got a pattern that I cut, okay? So I'm going to raise this up. Slide this in. It's going to be centered right about there. So that tells me that this tool will not hit this board. So I'm going to keep it back like that. Now what I'll do is just like clamping this down, this board is lower than this by about uh, 3 sixteenths, an eighth to 3 sixteenths, somewhere in that range. So I will capture this board by screwing it into here. One on this side, one on this side. So, what that's done is give me a board, it gives me a board that's locked in place, yet not marred up. I can't put clamps on this very well. You can, but I don't want to slot this board and do all that. So, it's screwed in place, it's nice and secure, so I can start it, except for. What did I forget to do? I didn't measure my center. So I have to take this off. OK. 
right? And measure my center from there to here. Okay, so from there to there is 20. Twenty-one. Well, half of twenty-one is ten and a half. So my center is right here. At ten and a half. Okay. So that's my center point. So I'll put this back on to lock it in place. See, that puts the downward pressure on this, so this is not going to move. See how it raised up over there a little bit? So I've got to put another screw over here to hold this down. And what I'm going to do is put another trap board over on this side to hold it down. So I need two screws for that and another board. I'm going to use this board to do the same thing on this side. So I'm going to rotate a little bit and do this side. Okay, now it's down and secured. So I will finish finding zero. Let me zoom out. Lock in my zero and hit run. Load the program, of course. And then hit run.
that step's done. What we'll do next is uh, take it off, lightly sand it, fill it with wood putty, black walnut wood putty, and then sand it again, and then lacquer it so it can be displayed. So that's the, what it looks like. That's one way or technique to mount a sign that's pretty hard to mount. Have fun with your CNC.